So we are like two weeks away from the Olympics getting underway. Donovan Bailey and Andre DeGrasse are going to stop by. But first, let me update you. We spoke with Kim Goche last week after she was being forced to make the tough decision between continuing to nurse her baby Sophie or playing professionally for the Canadian women's basketball team and having to find some sort of workaround. We've got good news. The IOC, which originally said no exceptions, decided to make one. So Kim and Sophie will be headed to Tokyo together. Well, speaking of the Olympics, man, this past week we have had headline after headline. Sports in general just showing out in the constant disrespect of black women in this space. Shakari Richardson, a name and style that so many of us stand, runs a breathtaking sprint of 10.86 seconds at the U.S. Olympic trials to secure her spot in Tokyo. That gets us hype. And then boom, we will not see her race. Why? Because of marijuana. Richardson tested positive for THC, something she has owned and atoned for, even explaining what she's been going through on the Today Show. Being in that position of my life, finding out something like that, something that I would say is probably one of the biggest things that have impacted me positively and negatively in my life when it comes to dealing with the relationship I have with my mother. So that definitely was a very heavy topic on me. She lost her mom and some are hitting her with the, oh, rules are the rules. You know, the first thing we should all be fixing up to say is, is she okay? We just went through this with Naomi Osaka. Mental health has to be a priority when it comes to dealing with athletes. Well, then we should address the rule itself. Uh, exactly why is marijuana still a banned substance when so many athletes use it openly and a lot more leagues have embraced it. And how about the response? Where was all this energy for Michael Phelps, Ross Rebliati, and how many white athletes are CBD and THC sponsors? Okay, and someone still needs to explain to me just how weed can enhance one's performance. That Richardson ran 10.86 with weed in her system? Man, that's amazing to me. Okay, so then comes the news that two runners from Namibia were disqualified from all races, 400 to 1600 meter, due to naturally higher levels of testosterone. And this is the same ruling on testosterone levels that stem from Castor Semenya's performance in 2009, one that was so fast that people thought that she had had to have been misgendered or a cheater because how dare you slap a whole heat in a competition? How dare she win? That rule also disqualified so many other black women from racing too. Oh, and as if those two stories weren't tiring enough, black women, this one is especially triggering. Hair. The Olympics are banning swimming caps designed for natural black hair, claiming that they do not fit the natural form of the head and aren't required by swimmers to compete. Well, whose head is considered natural? I'll wait. Soul Cap, a black owned business, designs these caps so that the sport of swimming can be more inclusive. And now the IOC is shutting that down. Alice Deering, a Soul Cap partner, is actually going to be the first black woman to represent Team Great Britain in the Olympic swimming this year. And she won't even be able to wear her Soul Cap. Now, these caps don't give you any advantage. They are just designed to accommodate different hair types because the Speedo caps were designed for, well, white hair. So make it make sense. I will. The Olympics just don't want to see black women win. Oh, and then Sunday, the New York Times coming in hot and with hot audio too. ESPN's Rachel Nichols basically questioning why Maria Taylor got the job to host the 2020 NBA Finals instead of her, saying it was because ESPN was feeling pressure on diversity. Okay, this one especially gets me because ever since last summer, we had a whole bunch of people, including Rachel, throwing around ally this, ally ship that. Uh, you know once the whole listening and learning phrase ran its course, but really, this is how some, and I would argue most, are really talking about this behind closed doors. See, allyship, it's, it's easy when it doesn't affect you or your bag directly. So when you claim to be down or for the people, be very sure, because that's gonna come with some sacrifice. And it's not even sacrifice, it's called fairness. White women are the first to benefit from any form of affirmative action. So this, this is all rich. Now let's get to the main character of the story, Maria Taylor, who deserves all the flowers and all of the things because that woman works. And the versatility, I mean, come on. Not to mention at every single turn, she uses her platform to uplift. It ain't that about being a black woman in this space, busting our tails to make it happen. And at every turn, there is someone to tell you why you do not deserve the things that you get. I know it firsthand, this show. Yeah, I saw the tweets. I only got this show because, well, you know, because of the climate, yada, yada, yada. We've all gotten it. To that, I say, check the receipts. 
we are good. We are prepared. More times than not, overqualified, sometimes overlooked, but it is amazing that we as black women are still here. So to any black girl out there that needs to hear this today, they will try to stop you. They will try to slow you. They will try to disqualify you and question you. Do not stop because they are not you. They do not know what you've had to overcome to get here. So let it fall off your back like a raindrop in the sky. And sis, keep dancing in your rain.